What's up, Melanated family? This is your boy Harrison with another brand new episode of the Melanated Convo podcast. I want to welcome everybody to the episode. If you've never listened to the Melanated Convo podcast before, what we basically do here is talk about in-depth situations going on in our community, whether it be news stories, whether it be um, different things in politics, relationships, whatever it may be. So we cover different news stories going on in black society. We also cover black businesses. I think it's extremely important as we move forward into our future, as we look at um, a lot of the things that go on in society that we don't like, when we look at how politics are played, when we look at the how finances are measured, when we look at the black community compared to other communities, it's extremely important that we not only support black businesses, but we find them, we speak highly of them, and we do our best to support them right now. Um, like I always say, it's not really a matter of just supporting any black business. Of course, you wanna make sure the business you're supporting is qualified and, and the products are um, up to par with everyone else selling the same goods or services. But at the end of the day, when we look at the health of our people, finances is a really big part of that. We are we all are aware of the amount of money black folks spend outside of our community. So I think it's imperative that we do what we can do our due diligence, like I like to say, to support black businesses, find them, support them, tell your friends about them, right? Also on the Melanated Combo podcast, what I like to do is go over a particular, a, a particular topic. It could be about family, it could be about our kids, it could be about our relationships. You know, I, t- I tend to lean more towards the situations with our children only because that's, um, you know, that's where my heart is. Having five kids so early and understanding all of the dynamics and all of the pitfalls of what can happen when you're an unprepared parent. And also, seeing what can happen when you prepare yourself a little more you know i've i've been on both sides of the spectrum so i try to speak to um both of those scenarios just to help the family out just to give people in our community something else to think about like i said when we look at social media when we look at um how we choose to entertain ourselves there's nothing wrong with having fun there's nothing wrong with letting your hair down and relaxing there's a time and place for all that but we still need to get to a point where we care about learning, where we care about information, where we care about um, doing things the right way and, and being uncomfortable. Because sometimes when you are introduced to a new perspective or you're, inter- or, or you're introduced to something you're not too familiar with, um, it can be an uncomfortable feeling. You know what I'm saying? But in reality, you're not really learning if you're not in an uncomfortable situation. Uh, Uh, attempting to make that situation more comfortable so on the show we go over different topics that i feel the family should talk about right also what i want to talk about today just real quickly again i want to thank everybody who came out to the first saturday of our special black history month celebration we're going to do it three saturdays in a row the first saturday was this past saturday the 15th where we um did a screening of the the critically acclaimed documentary hidden colors one which is a really, really, really great documentary about black history. If you haven't seen it, you should. I think if you go to hiddencolorsfilms.com, Tariq is having, Tariq Nasheed, the director and creator of the films, is having a deal, like a promotional deal on all of the movies for, um, for Black History Month. So everybody should go to the website and get on top of that. But the event was great. You know, we had an okay turnout. Of course, I would have wanted there to be more people there, but I I don't complain in that matter. I think, you know, I'm I'm going to do my best for the people who do show love, for the people who do show up, for the people who do act like they want to be involved, for the, you know, the people who come around and 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 want to um be on the same page and I'm all for that. You feel me? So, we had a nice turnout, not a real big turnout, but a nice turnout. The people who came really enjoyed the movie. We had popcorns, we had chips and candy and all type of snacks for everybody. Um, we had a white gentleman come who, you know, at first I'm, I'm <laughs> at first when he came in the building, I'm looking at him side eyed because, you know, our our facility is the funeral home is a chapel type setting. So it looks like a church, even though we have TVs in there and it's real comfortable. 
you know, it kind of looks like a church. So in my mind, I'm thinking a white man coming into a church. He looking all suspicious. Shit finna get to pop it. You feel me? <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> so I'm constantly looking at him and, and you know, just, just, just checking his, just, just checking his temperature to it, to a degree. But ultimately the, the brother was cool. We, he watched the whole movie afterwards. He asked questions about the movie. So we had like a little Q and a, um, for, for about 10 minutes, which was unexpected, but much appreciated. You feel me? So that just happened this past Saturday. Um, this coming up Saturday. Saturday, the 22nd, the 22nd, I'm really excited because we're going to do it again. This time we're going to have the Hidden Colors 5 movie plan, which is another great critically acclaimed documentary about history that I think everybody should see. Um, we're going to have the movie playing at 2 p.m. After the movie plays at 5 p.m., we're going to have a panel discussion with myself, Keon Johnson, Mr. Lewis, uh, Chris Lodson um, and a brother I just met named Aurelius the Saint. So we're going to have a great conversation about solutions in the black community in 2020. We're going to have a conversation about combating all of the warfare that's been waged on our community, kind of playing into the theme of Hidden Colors 5, which speaks a lot about warfare and, 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 and how that has been, um, how, how that's taken place against our people in 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 our community right so we are, we're we're gonna have a great time this saturday man with the movie um with the panel discussion if you're in the sacramento area and you can hear the sound of my voice please come out to the function now of course like i said before i know we typically tend to spend the weekends with our family so if it's any reason you know somebody can't make it i completely understand but the same token a lot of us choose to use um, the weekends to fuck off a little bit and then go have fun, let your hair down. You feel me? Take some me time or whatever the case may be. That happens just as well as the family time. But, and I'm aware of that. So if you are available, if you have the time, a couple hours, even if you can't stay for the whole movie or stay for the whole panel discussion, please, please, please come down, man. Fuck with us. And, you know, um, um, it's, it's time that we, in my opinion, as a people, take knowledge more serious take education more serious just getting a like a clear and a contextual understanding of where we come from and a lot of the things we've had to go through in this country that's pertinent man that that's extremely important for our kids future for us to be in a position to educate them on what they're looking at right so please 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 everybody come down um enjoy the movie with us we're gonna get this thing popping now the next weekend on the 29th we're gonna do it again on the 29th we are going to show 2 p.m. the same time the movie will start, but this time, not Hidden Colors, we're gonna be showing a documentary by um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, who is um, not just an activist, um, but he's a, he used to be a college pro professor. He focuses on finances and different things the black community needs to do financially to get, this, to get ourselves out of the situation we're in now. So we're gonna watch a movie called The Secret to Financial Black Intelligence, um, which is his documentary. So please come out and, 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 and watch that. The movie's gonna start at two. After the documentary at 5 p.m., we're going to have a financial workshop where we have a gentleman. Um, we have a gentleman come talking about real estate, how to buy your first home, how to um, um, get your credit score right to buy the home. So he kind of walks you through that entire process. Uh, first time home buyer programs, all of these different things. He's going to have he's going to have a lot of information about this stuff. Um, so that'll be the 29th the 29th of this month so we'll have the the real estate guy and then we're also going to have a gentleman who helped me with my life insurance situation he's going to come and talk about life insurance talk about estate planning talk about the rates in which you would pay for life insurance based on your age based on any any ailments you may have excuse me so both brothers is going to come and talk a lot about things that we need in our community so Excuse me. So if you guys know anybody who does not have life insurance or looking to change from the life insurance provider they have now, if you know anyone who does not have a home or is interested in buying a home for whatever reason, whether it be just rental or a family home for them and their people, please have them come down to Thompson Rose Chapel. Um, this will be on the 29th of this month. The address to the facility here is 3601 Fifth Avenue, 95817. So if you're in the area, man, come rock with us, right? So speaking of, so I'm gonna get into my news stories. 
Speaking of um, hidden colors in black people having knowledge of self, um, the next few news stories that I talk about kind of plays into that because you know, I think when our children go when our children go through things out here in the streets, when they go through things out here in society, it's extremely important that we have the information to give them, that we have knowledge about these things so we can kind of break it down for them. So they don't feel like they're out here alone. So they don't feel like um, less than when these racist incidents kind of rear their ugly head, right? So first news story, family. First news story is out of California, right? So this is what took place. A California mother is upset today because she believes, um, you know, her son's race played a large part in what took place. So what happened was at his school, this is a seven-year-old black boy in California. He attends Tesoro Dale Valley Elementary School. I'm not sure what city it is. In. It didn't say it here in the article. Um, but it's the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department came to, to, to the school. So I'm sure the... Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure this, the school is somewhere in L.A. County or, 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 or at least close by, right? So what happened was the little seven-year-old black boy was outside. They had a fire alarm. He's speaking to another white. He's speaking to a white kid who his mom says was actually bullying him. But he's speaking to a white kid. And the white kid, for whatever reason, tells the teacher that the seven-year-old boy has a gun in his backpack, right? Now, I would think in a scenario like this, because guns are brought to school and, you know, these type of incidents have happened before, I would say you would just go to the boy's backpack, look at his backpack, see what's going on, right? So the teachers, principals, the uh, the, administrator, the administrators at this school went to the boy's backpack, looked in the backpack, seen there wasn't a gun, and they still called the police. You heard me. They seen the seven-year-old boy did not have a gun in his backpack, and they still called the police. They still called the police on this seven-year-old child. Now, and to make matters worse, one police officer didn't show up. Six fucking police officers showed up, and they were interrogating this seven-year-old boy, asking him questions, and to make matters even worse than that, they didn't even contact his mom. So his mom didn't know about it until after the fact. You feel me? So they... Uh, 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 a kid can lie on him and say hey he has a gun in his backpack they check the backpack make sure there's no gun there's no weapons there's no anything but you still call the police on them you see what i'm saying so again man whenever we and this is a primarily white school let me put that let me put that part into context and that's the thing man we we try not to i know me personally i try not to put everything in a racial context um, just to be fair to whatever situation that I'm looking at, but it's extremely hard to do family when you have situations like this, because I, it's everything in me is saying, if this was a white kid, there's no way you would have called the cops on a white kid. There's, there's no way you would have made it feel like it was this much of a problem. Right. And again, like I said, this is a primarily white school. So we have to, we have to factor that in. So they called the police. They came six deep, detained the little boy for a small amount of time. Of course, he didn't go to jail or they didn't bring him to the police station, none of that shit, but it's traumatizing nonetheless, right? Also, the mother, something she mentioned that I think was was uh, important to the story is the little boy is a special needs. I if You can't see my hands, but quote unquote, a special needs child requiring individual requiring a individualized education plan and here's the thing about this because dr umar johnson who i'm a strong advocate and fan of speaks a lot about um mental health it speaks a lot about how our young boys are railroaded into special ed and and learning disabilities and all these things just because a lot of the um a lot of the tools in which they use to assess these situations are kind of racist. A lot of the tools they use are kind of based out of a European type of philosophy and it doesn't really lend itself to evaluating black kids correctly, right? So when she says he's a special needs kid requiring individualized education plans, that's like a red, a, 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 a red flag for me as well because who said he's a special needs kid? And again, I don't know this young lady. I don't know where the diagnosis came from or how she came to that conclusion but if you're at a primarily white school and they're saying your kid is special needs and then they're acting like this towards him when 
uh, a situation happens, it may be time to find a new school or do like the sister is doing and she she alerted the news. She She's making a big deal out of it because the situation is a big deal. You feel me? So to that sister, I appreciate you put, make, making this public because she went on Facebook and talked about it and, you know what I'm saying, made it use social media for what, it's, for what it should be used for, to spread messages, to spread dialogue, to, to add new perspectives to, to, the, to the universe. And she definitely going to bat for her son so we pray for the sister hopefully she can get through the situation man but we got to understand when we are in environments where it's all white or primarily white again talking about the history piece you got to begin even at seven you got to begin teaching your son about white supremacy fam i know some of us aren't comfortable with that i know some of us aren't comfortable with racism and we don't see it as this ambiguous thing that's always around us until some shit happens to us. Then we want to cry foul. I prefer not to see it that way. I prefer to stay on point with all this shit and educate all of my children as much as I've been able to about what's going on out here, about where our place is in this country. So when racialized incidents pop off, they don't feel less than. They, they don't take it to their mental too much. You feel me? So seven-year-old boy getting harassed by six cops ain't cool i hope she does something to that school to um bring attention to this so some shit like this won't happen again in the future to her son or none of our black babies you feel me now next story similar let me see here next story is similar to that one this story is out of mississippi it is mardi gras time in the south so this family was in Mississippi waiting for the floats. You know how, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with, with Mardi Gras, but floats go by. On the floats are different characters based on whatever the theme is. They're throwing beads, they're throwing cups, they're throwing shirts, they're, they're throwing all kind of trinkets. And the 12 year old black girl, she's outside with her mom. Her mom name is Nicole, hope I'm saying the last name correctly, Nicole Fair Contour. Nicole Fair Contour and she went on Facebook on Instagram as well to make this story public um, and basically what happened is she was sitting in front um, sitting in front of her her uncle's body shop her uncle has a business in the area they're sitting in front of the, the body shop the flow goes by a white man calls her 12 year old daughter over to the to the float he hands her and <laughs> this is some some crazy shit family he hands her a black doll a black a little black doll with a noose around his neck now the young 12 year old girl isn't quite sure what the doll is yet she grabs it she's she's thankful she clutches it puts it to her chest when she's running off he calls he calls to her and says hey that's you you, do you do you get that do you do you hear what i'm saying so he gives her a black doll with a noose around the neck and as she leave as she's leaving he calls over to her and says hey that's you just to make sure she understands that noose around your neck black girl that that's a picture of you basically that that that's who who your people is you feel me so that's some real crazy shit, family. Now, in the area, because the mom made a big mess out of it, the mayor got involved, of course, like there's always some type of damage control shit going on. But the mayor got involved, and they're basically saying this man, they haven't identified who he is yet, um, can be charged with a hate crime. They are going to attempt to charge him with a hate crime. You feel me? And that's, that's rightfully so. But again, I picked these two stories for a specific reason family we got to get on our history shit man we got to get on our cultural shit where we're when we're in the home with our families and nobody's around and our kids are there we need to use these opportunities to educate our children on the beast we need to educate our children on what we're dealing with we need to educate them on this system that we're all a part of and the role that black people have played that melanated people have played throughout history now she mentioned that her son was distraught about this her son who had to watch it other family members who had to watch it her daughter who had to watch it or oh, i'm sorry her, her daughter who it happened to let me tell you something family do some racist shit to my 12 year old he ready. He ready. He ready. 
he ready. How he how he is gonna digest the information is gonna be much different than a child who doesn't know anything about white supremacy or anything about our history or anything about how conniving and dirty some of these low down white supremacists can be because they're trying to get to the point where they understand why this white man gave her a fucking doll with a noose around the neck, but ain't no reason. He can play the naivete shit and act like he didn't know or he don't know what's going on, but that's bullshit. I don't believe that or agree with that by any stretch of the imagination. He knew exactly what he was doing. That's why when she was leaving, he said, that's you. He could have just gave her the doll and let her go about her way, but he wanted to know, no, 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 little nigger girl, this is your ass. You feel me? So again, that's an unfortunate situation that shouldn't have happened. And I'm happy the mother is standing up and wanting to see justice serve. And I don't know what her daughter knows about history. I'm not going to assume that she hasn't taught her children anything about our conditions in this country. However, this shows me how much it's how important it is, how imperative it is for all of us. Everybody that's black in this country, you need to if you haven't done it yet as an adult, you need to begin teaching yourself about the different racist factions of this country and how institutionalized racism works. It's covert now. It's not as overt as it used to be, family. The blind eye sometimes can't even see some of this shit that's been going on. So y'all need to do your best to wake your third eye up so when some shit like this happen, you and your family can be prepared for it. So like I said, I'm not going to say the sister hasn't prepared her children by talking to them about racism and different things that go on. I just know that it's important and it's something that we should all do. You feel me? So like I said, this Saturday, Hidden Colors 5, great place to start. If you have not seen this movie, you know, I'm a real big advocate of, of course, I want all the adults to come and and everybody from all walks of life, all, all ages, all colors even to a degree, right? But... We really need to get our young people involved with this information. We really need to get our young people locked in with this info so they can know what's going on out here. So this weekend, Hidden Colors 5 will be playing at my spot, 3601 Fifth Avenue. Come down, bring your kids down. So if your kid get handed a goddamn doll with a noose on his neck, they'll be able to contextualize what they're looking at and not internalize it, you feel me? So look. Those are the two news stories that I wanted to touch on strictly based on what I'm doing this weekend and next weekend for history. We need to understand how important it is at any time some shit like this can happen to any one of our children. And the question family is, are you prepared? You feel me? Now, look, next thing I want to talk about something I wasn't going to speak about, but I want to bring a little light to it. Um, share my two cents on the scenario. R.I.P to the young brother Pop Smoke, who was just 20 years old. Um, apparently on the night yesterday, apparently yesterday, there was a home invasion um, at his home in the Hollywood Hills. The young brother got shot several times and died. Um, people were mentioning how he gave out his address a couple days or a couple hours beforehand. He had a party at his house a couple hours beforehand, so people knew where he was. Um, really, really unfortunate shit, man. And as I become an older black man um, and I begin to look at our people and look at some of the situations we find ourselves in a little bit differently. It saddens me that we're, we, even though a lot of us are quote unquote woke and a lot of us are aware of um, what we fate, what we're faced with in this country. And because of that, we kind of move a little bit differently. Not enough of us are man, because again, not a lot of information has been released about this situation. So I'm not just going to say it was black people who killed him. But I'll be honest, I would say eight or nine times out of ten, it probably was somebody black. Now, why? We don't know. You feel me? Because sometimes when a brother of ours or a family member of ours, somebody we know gets shot or is a victim of some sort of violence, um, we always go to them being the victim and them um, um, getting taken advantage of some way, like some something nefarious happened, right? And that 
is the case most of the time, but you know, you gotta kinda step back and look. We don't know what he was into. We don't know what was going on behind the scenes. But by just looking at what we see, it looks like somebody was coming to get something from him. Either it was his money, either it was jewelry, either it was car, whatever it may be. Family, we gotta get to a point where we looking at, we look at other black people and, and, and not like they food, you feel me? But like they your brother, like they're a compan like they're a partner of yours. Like we all on the same page to a degree. You see what I'm saying? Because when I see, you know, there's been a lot of deaths involving young black men who are hip hop artists or just young hip hop artists over the past couple years. I mean a lot. Now some of them have been due to prescription drugs and people mixing certain drugs and not being aware of how deadly the mixture may be that's been taking place but some of this shit has been young black men with pistols shooting other black men over trivial shit over shit that i know once they get locked up for once they behind them gates they're not gonna feel the same way about it it ain't about in most cases it don't look like it's about somebody killing somebody in my family so i'm going after you you're touching my daughter or my son so i'm going after you excuse me doesn't necessarily look like that be the case a lot of times so if not what are we talking about the love of money what are we talking about greed what are we talking about fucking uh uh, uh hatred are we talking about jealousy are we talking about just not liking somebody because they popping because the young man i'm i wasn't my son is a fan of his music and i know some other people who listen to his music i tried to listen to the last album even before this incident took place and you know i wasn't the biggest fan of of the young brother and i find myself in that situation a lot with this generation's hip-hop where i may see a young man that i support and i think you know i'm happy that he's um in a better place financially i'm happy that he's figured out something he can do that he's passionate about he can move his family out the hood he can do different things for the forest people i'm happy about that but you know a lot of times i i, I don't be the biggest fan of the music as much as just the, uh, a, a fan of the person's moves and how they actually operate, right? But this is another sad case of a young black man dying by the hand of a gun. And when I look at how quick we are to hurt each other, I'm getting a little um, frustrated by it because when a racist incident happens and a white man does something to one of us, I, I don't recall ever, and, it's, and I could be wrong, but since I don't, since I've been alive, since I've been uh, a, a teenager, since since I've been aware of what's going on out here, I haven't seen a racist incident take place, and somebody in our community who called himself Street go out and get the motherfucker who did it. You see what I'm saying? When a little girl come up missing, when there's a church shooting, when there's a George Zimmerman out there, we don't have the same venom for people who harm other people in our community as we do for a motherfucker who we want money from or a motherfucker who stepped on our shoe or some frivolous shit like that you feel me that's again family that's why i think figuring out a way to teach our youth about history to teach our youth about knowledge itself this may be that may be the way out of all this shit family because that young man was 20 years old it's like some of these young niggas don't get it that death shit is final, man. That shit is final. And what did you get from him? Let's say they robbed him or did whatever. What did you actually get from him that was worth his life? Nothing. You see what I'm saying? And again, I don't know what personal beefs he was dealing with in the street. That could have been, this could have had something to do with that. We can't discount that. But at the end of the day, we need to do a better job of how we treat each other. Even on a smaller scale, I'm watching black people tear down Dwayne Wade. I'm watching black people, any celebrity or anybody they don't like, you tearing them down. But when it comes to the white power structure, you ain't really got no smoke for them. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're, we're not really set up mentally to be revolutionary in our fighting and our thinking. This system has fucked us up so much that we look at our brother as the enemy we look at the people who are in our direct proximity as the enemy and god damn man when we look at white supremacy and fighting racism fighting the injustices that are institutionalized and are ingrained in our society we gotta be honest black folks we make it really difficult to fight those things when we can't really get along 
we make it really difficult to fight those things when we're constantly fighting each other. Now, that's not everybody, because all of us don't operate like that, but enough of us do it to create high levels of dysfunction in our community. So that's why this Saturday, if you're in the area, come out to the panel discussion, come out and watch the movie. We're gonna be discussing these types of things, family. We need to find ways to get into spaces and get around people who are like-minded, people who think the same way you think so we can start moving in the right direction because if we don't, history is gonna continue um, continually be repeating itself. We're gonna continually go through a lot of the same shit we've been going through since we've been here. And me, frankly, I'm tired of it. Like I'm tired of it. So my whole thinking is how can I, as an individual, help my people out? What resources do I have? What what mental capacity am I at where I can actually help my people? And I think, you know, that's what I've been attempting to do, man. I'm gonna continue to do that until things are better in our community, until things turn around for the better. And, you know, I see sparks of um, hope, sparks of, of what could be, but at the end of the day, shit is still fucked up. And if all, if we don't put all hands on deck or enough hands on deck, because again, it don't have to be all of us for, for us to revolutionize because once enough of us get on deck, the people who was kind of wishy-washy, they just gonna come in anyway, you feel me? So RIP to the young brother Pop Smoke. Like I said, I wasn't too familiar with him, but he is a young black man who lost his life by the hands of a gun. And that's some shit we really gotta nip in the bud, you feel me? Now, those are the news stories. Let's go to the businesses, right? My favorite part of the podcast, man. The businesses. Talk about the new business. Talk about new products and services. You feel me? So look, first business. This is the business I talked about last week. Like I said, I'm going to talk about every business two weeks in a row. I want to talk about the Huey Company again. If you have not been to HueyCompany.com, this is a black clothing brand, a black clothing brand inspired by Black Panther revolutionary Huey P. Newton. The name of the website is HueyCompany.com, HueyCompany.com. On this website, in my opinion, there's some really, really fly shoes on the website. The shoes are named or inspired by revolutionary thinking. There's like the Pan-Africanizers, there's like the the King Runners, there's like the uh, 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 Partitioners, there's a lot of different names. The shoes of the name, the, the, the names of the shoes match revolutionary time periods, match revolutionary uh, people. It's just really great to see. And on top of that, the shoes is fly. On top of that, the shoes look like any cross trainer that you would buy from Nike or that you would buy from Adidas, you feel me? So they have a several pairs of different shoes you can purchase, um, boots, um, different things like that. There's clothes, a lot of different shirts with revolutionary designs on the shirts inspired by our people, in, inspired by empowerment, really empowering messages on the shirt. So I recommend everybody go to HueyCompany.com, check out what they got going, hats on the website, clothes for women on the website. If you purchase anything off of the website right now, if you purchase anything off of the website right now, you get a free hat with your purchase. That's right, you get a free hat with your purchase. You can get some of these nice trainers as far as the shoes are concerned for as low as like $35.99. Now, I know a couple people who've already purchased the shoes. They love them, they like them. They, they say the quality is all that. So my question to you black folks, what you waiting on, you feel me? We like to dress, we are the we are the flyest motherfuckers in the United States. There isn't a race of people who can keep up with us when it comes to fashion, when it comes to a sense of fashion, when it comes to looking good, but we don't gotta break the bank when we do it. You feel me? You don't gotta spend all your money looking good. Your, your priorities don't have to be based on um, spending a certain amount of money to look good. We, you know, looking good and comes from feeling good. If you feel good first, then regardless of what you put on your body, you just gonna accentuate that shit, you feel me? And it's, it's not really gonna be about a price point or anything like that. It's gonna be about quality, of course, but it's gonna be about what's inside of you. So everybody go to HueyCompany.com, check out the suit, uh, check out the shoes, check out the clothes, the hats, the different items they have on the website. If you like what you see, don't hesitate to buy something. Um, make sure you share on your social media. If you like what you see, you tell everybody you know. You spread the word for them. Again, that's HueyCompany.com. 
go to the website, see what they got, get that free shirt. I'm sorry, get that free hat when you purchase them shoes. You feel me? Now, for the next and last business, it is tax season. Everybody want that tax money back. Everybody want that money back as fast as possible. Everybody want to get that little check so they can go flip it. See, hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. What you can do when you get your tax money back, you can go to Huey.com and get you some of them fresh kicks. You feel me? I just made a, I just planned it out for you, family. You know, thank me later. Feel me? Now, for the next business, like I'm saying, it's time for taxes. It's time for people people to file their taxes. You want to file your taxes as quick as possible. You want to do it with no hassle. You want to make sure you get your money back as quick as possible. You need to holler at my boy Marlon. Marlon Singleton. His name is Marlon Singleton. Marlon Singleton. And he has a business called Speedy Tax Services. It's called Speedy Tax Services. Services. They're here in the Sacramento area. It's 916-889-88. I'm sorry, 916-889-4858. But I'm sure if you're in a different city, he'll be able to do everything for you via email, via fax. You guys can probably hook it up that way. I'm sure he can help anybody in the country. But if you're going to do your taxes, which we're all going to do, if you're going to do your taxes, try to get your money back, you might as well mess with a black business while doing it. If you don't want to mess with my boy mr singleton at speedy tax services i'm sure there's a black tax professional in your area not only does he do not only does he does not only does he do taxes but he does all your accounting needs he can do bookkeeping bank re- reconciliation accounts payable receivable uh payroll processing record keeping uh quick books he's a professional and has experience in all of these things so that is speedy tax services you want to get your taxes done right you want to get your taxes done fast you want everything to be accurate holler at mr c mr singleton he'll get the job done right for you again that's 916-889-4858 speedy tax services if you want to hit him by email to make an appointment or to get more information you can go to speedy taxes at comcast.net that's speedy taxes at comcast.net like i said all your account needs he has experience the brother's professional bookkeeping bank reconciliation accounts payable receivable payroll processing record keeping quickbooks all that Holla at my boy, Mr. Singleton, Speedy Tax Services. Get them taxes done so you can get that money. Then you can go to HueyCompany.com and buy the shoes. You feel me? Go to somebody black to get the money. Go to somebody black to spend the money. See how it works? That's actually how you keep money in your community, family. Feel me? So you boom. You get your money from Mr. Singleton. You go to Mar- you go to HueyCompany.com. Bam. From HueyCompany.com, you go online. You do that. Bam. You head right from there to a black restaurant. Bam. You head right from the black restaurant to a black art show or a black concert or somebody else black doing something in your neighborhood you feel me see how the money circulate need your car wash see the homie on the corner see the brother on the corner who washed cars and do a great job boom slid him a quick dub now he washed your car feel me you just spent four hundred dollars where in your community you feel me? So go to Speedy Tax Services. Go to Speedy Tax Services. That's 916-889-4858. Get your taxes done. The brother gonna hook you up. Now, the topic for today. Every day on my uh, Facebook, Instagram, I do a quick question I ask called the question of the day where I talk about something important, similar to what I do now, but it's a little more direct, a little more in your face. It's on camera so people can kind of see me. This podcast is not on camera, it's just audio. So I do the questions of the day just to put something in the universe that has my face attached to it and still address real shit at the same time, right? So question I asked the other day was about should we or should we not call our sons the man of the house? And on this episode, because normally the video I do is four to nine minutes, you feel me? I wanted to expand on that idea. So here's the thing. When we look at our communities, for whatever reason, now I'm because I'm not blaming the man or the woman, we're, 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 we're equally at fault for this shit. For whatever reason, you'll find households where it's just a woman, right? Boom. Just a woman. She have a son or a daughter, a couple sons, couple daughters, whatever the case may be. Something we tend to do 
when there isn't a man present, there isn't a masculine, the necessary masculine energy present, what we'll do, I think primarily moms kind of uh, uh, present this as an option for kids, but you'll have a little boy, he's six, seven years old, you know, you tell him when it's time to do things around the house that are more masculine, that are manly, you tell him, hey, you the man of the house, right? When it comes to what he does, when it, when it comes to the cleaning the house, when it comes to not rules, when it comes to different things in the house, you want him to feel important, you want him to feel like you're gonna be a man soon, so let's get you started now, right? So the premise of that sounds safe, and, 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 and at the same time, for some young men, this can help them be responsible quicker. This can help them understand that they will be depended on at some point in time so they can come more dependable. Um, this can help them get their shit together quicker. I, I, I've heard a lot of men say I had to take care of my mom. I had to, I had to take care of my little sister. So I got out into the world quicker than I normally would because I had to provide for these people, even if it's not not just money but emotional support just being there physically whatever the case may be right so again the premise of this sounds safe enough but let me tell you the flip side to it and the reason why i asked the question is because i personally just so you know i personally don't think we should call our young men the man of the house i think young men need time to develop they need time to be kids all those adolescent years should be spent um being a child going through childlike things those experiences help shape you as a person as well right but here's the thing sometimes when you put that out there and you say okay this is the man of the house he's the man of the house whatever the case may be some kids take this and begin living like they're older they take this and they go out into the world and they're going to either start selling dope because they think they got to make money and they're too young to just go out and get money the, the legal way. They're going to start selling dope. They're going to start taking on responsibility that um, risk responsibility that's not really that's not really right for a person their age. So they're going to actually think they're the man of the house, meaning they're in the house with their mom. And let's say they got a sister. They think they got to regulate who comes and goes. They think they got to regulate who has a boyfriend and who don't. They think they got to regulate all the details about what's happening in the home. And the battery was put in his back by his mom, who several years ago told him he was the man of the house. You feel me? So now he's operating as the man of the house. And sometimes you can have a young man operating as he's the man of the house, but he ain't paying shit he not doing nothing financially for the house he's not taking care of none of the adult responsibilities but you got this little nigga thinking he the man in the house you see what i'm saying excuse me so not only will he go out into the street sometime and think he gotta sell dope go out to the street think he gotta excuse me be a part of that activity to bring money home but he may even begin conducting himself that way when it comes to the women he dates he may when it's time for him to uh, get a girlfriend he may think having a baby is rightfully so for him because he already a man. I've been a man in my house for five or six years. I help raise my little sister. I help raise my little brother, not knowing that when it's your child, when you're the primary care, um, when, when you're the person that's primarily responsible for the child, the dynamics change. It's not like when it was your little sister. You see what I'm saying? The dynamics change and we can put our young men in a situation where he has accelerated his life's path. Now he's doing things that he shouldn't be doing at 16 or he shouldn't be doing at 17. So instead of having a youth or instead of having a childhood where he's looking for what college he, uh, he wanna go to, playing sports, getting into activities, all these things kids should be focusing on. Now he's focusing on making money. Now he's focusing on regulating the house, coming home and putting motherfuckers in check and doing different things like this when he's not even a full man yet. You see what I'm saying? So you've accelerated his growth process and he's not even ready for it. He's displaying that he's not ready for it by his immaturity to a degree. You see what I'm saying? So this is a slippery slope, but I'm not saying don't say, I wouldn't do it personally, but I'm not saying don't say to your child, he's the man in the house, but you're going to have to lay some ground rules. You're going to have to kind of articulate in, in, put that in the context for him so you can understand that. Now I've seen, uh, like I said in my video a few days ago, I've seen men who live in the home with his woman and his son or his daughter and his kids, whatever, he may be leaving for the weekend. He may be leaving for a day, a couple days. He'll tell his son, hey, 
while I'm gone, hold down the house. You the man of the house. Now, the reason why this is different is because his perspective on man of the house is going to be different in that scenario because he's been able to watch a man. He's been actually able to watch a man be the man of the house. And whatever type of father his dad is, he's going to take on that same type of role. But at the end of the day, that's in a controlled environment because this isn't something permanent. This isn't something that's being forced upon him. This is just something he's doing or being told about. Um, or being told about simply because dad is gone for a couple days. So it's not the pressure of you got to be the man in the house because there's no man here. You see what I'm saying? So that's a little bit different family. But we need to understand if you have a kid and there's no man around, you need to instantly. Now, I'm not telling women to just lay up and shack up with any man to get your man to get your kids a father. But, you know, that's something you should think about. Back in the day when they used to say you know when single women um would literally say that i'm looking for a father for my kids just hearing that terminology as a young person i'm like what the fuck what you mean looking for a father where his father at i you know i had all these these questions right and i don't really agree with that mindset completely but i understand the sentiments of saying look I'm a woman and I can't do this all by myself. I need the presence of a man around to help me balance shit out. Somehow, after um, you know, after the welfare system and after all these institutionalized things that were instituted to break our families up, now we have women thinking they don't need men. Now we now we have women having babies and not focusing on the family part. Men do it too. I'm not putting it directly on women, but we have babies not focusing on the family part. We thinking, okay, I ain't gonna need the man because I'm gonna get the money. I'm gonna get welfare, whatever the case may be. I can do it myself financially. So a man is here, he not, I'm still gonna be cool. That really shouldn't be our attitude, family. Our attitude should be, I'm not pregnant yet I'm messing with this guy or I'm messing with this girl do I see myself being in a long term relationship with this person do I see myself uh, do I see myself settling down with this person what kind of person am I dealing with are they responsible in this area do they have kids already if so what type of father are they to their kids you feel me these are all things we need to be looking at before the baby comes before the child comes we need to be we need to do our due diligence about the person that we're dealing with and if we find out that certain things about this person doesn't meet our criteria you can keep fucking with them just don't have a baby by them you see what i'm saying i think sometimes and i'm a victim and i say this all the time but i'm not a victim i'm sorry i'm a participant in these type of scenarios too where you fucking with somebody, you have a baby. Then after the baby comes, you want to talk, you want to think about uh, uh, spending a life with them or think about what kind of person they are, what kind of mother they'll be, what kind of father they'll be. It's a little bit too late now, family. You see what I'm saying? However, if you find yourself in a, in a situation where you do have a child and for whatever reason, maybe you were in a committed relationship and it just didn't work out. That shit happens too. For whatever reason, you guys aren't in a relationship anymore. You need to, on the low, be searching for a man that'll be a good role model for your kids, for your daughters, for your son. I don't recommend just bringing new people around your kids all the time. That can have some negative attributes as well. But you need to seriously be looking at yourself and determining, why am I not a man in a relationship? Is it me? Does it have something to do with my personality? Does it have something to do with my standards? Are they too high? Are they too low? Am I picking people who are just nothing more than a reflection of who I am? Do I need to change before I find the actual partner that my mind think I need, but I keep getting this bullshit? People don't realize you keep getting bullshit in your life. That's not no coincidence, family. You got a little bit of bullshit in you, which is cool. That's cool, just realize that. Realize that. Understand what you have to work on. Under, understand in what areas you got to make improvements so you can be a better person, so you can create an environment where you can be in a healthy relationship with the opposite sex. Because that's all it's really about, family, It's being in a healthy, stable, structured environment. That's what children need. Now, for whatever reason, when this don't happen, we can't force some shit on our son. Okay, you the man of the house. And then you some some women make it worse by saying you the man of the house because your punk ass daddy ain't here because your daddy didn't. Nah, 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 nah. That's all bullshit. You chose him. 
That's the bottom line. Women act like we be coming out of the bag on them. When from day one, when you fucked him, you knew he's so dope. You knew he didn't take care of the son that, that he got already. You knew he was a rolling stone to that son. You knew the nigga didn't wash his drawers. You feel me? <laughs> All the shit you didn't like about him, you knew about it. Rarely did the hell of time go by and all of a sudden it's like, oh, you jumped out the bag on me. No, you was kind of, you kind of knew that, but the dick was good. You kind of knew that, but he was paying your bill. You kind of knew that, but he had a nice car. You kind of knew that, but he looked good. You see what I'm saying? Whatever you put in there blank, whatever reason you did it, we know most of the time, right? So we have to be completely cognizant and know how to put all of these things into perspective so we don't make mistakes and fuck up the parenting part of our lives because once that's over it's over once your kids become a teenager once they grow up ain't no fucking do-overs ain't no do-overs family you can't go back now of course you can be a reflective person and learn from your mistakes and talk to your kid to say hey back then this was i was dealing with something that was a problem or this was a problem here you see what i'm saying you can be reflective and talk to them about the negative shit you had to endure the negative shit you put on them you can do that but why why have to go that far why not beforehand we make sure shit is right you feel me so look Calling your son the man in the house, getting back to the topic, calling your son the man in the house is extremely dangerous and should be done with caution. I think sometimes, too, we kids be at an age sometime where everything they do is cute. Everything they say is cute. Everything they say is kind of is reminiscent of maybe their dad or reminiscent of somebody in your family. So you just laughing and playing with them. Don't do that shit, family. Don't do that shit, family. That that shit you think is cute will turn into what what ruins his relationships at school. Or that shit you think is cute may turn into what ruined y'all relationship. You see what I'm saying? You see your son or daughter doing some shit you don't like, you got to nip that shit in the bud. You feel me? And not having a man around, regardless of why that's the case, that's a problem. See, that's the thing. If we are in a single parent homes, we need to understand, uh, and this is my opinion, family, unless you were in a long-term relationship with someone and it just didn't work out because that happens too, like I said, then you tried your best, you put your best foot forward, the relationship just didn't work out. I personally think that don't happen all the time. I think you're just fucking somebody and you get pregnant. That's what I think happens for a lot of our younger people in our community. You just, you just chilling with somebody, having sex with them. Y'all not using the condom. You get pregnant. Now you're just making up shit as you go. You're just creating a life with somebody as you as you go. And in my opinion, that's like a ticking time bomb, a bomb, family. That shit is bound to not work. You see what I'm saying? So how we relate to one another, how we decide to start families, we need to think about that differently. We need to think about that differently. If we created environments where most of the houses had men in them, Men who are stable, men who are positive, men who are um, positive contributors to society. I don't mean just any old fucking man because the wrong man around you can make things worse. So if we do these, if we do these things the right way or, or at least put our best foot forward to do it the right way, because like I said, sometimes shit just don't work out. But if we put our best foot forward to do things the right way, in most cases, we should be okay, family. You, you won't have to call your son the man of the house because there will be a man of the house. How about we put the effort into actually getting a man of the house, right? Making yourself more of a suitable mate, more of a suitable catch. Because in reality, women, it's different for a woman to be single than a man to be single. What I think. If you're a woman and you're single, you can say all day, I'm, you know, I'm choosing to be, there's, you know, I can't find nobody or all these niggas ain't shit, whatever the case may be. The bottom line is you haven't been chose yet. Bottom line, I don't know many men who are single who treat it like he's on the hunt and he has to find somebody and his time is ticking down. Men kind of do what they want to do out here in these streets. We are um, the leaders of the relationship to a degree. Like when it comes to the, the mating process, when it comes to finding a partner, I mean, that particular part of the process. Typically, women don't come up to us and say, hey, how you doing, what's your number, all that shit. Typically, you're you're the hunter. You're out looking for women. You're out introducing yourself to women. Now, if you're a woman and men ain't talking to you or the men who are talking to you is men you don't like, that's your lesson right there. 
that's your lesson right there. If you, if a lot of men are getting at you and you don't like these men, what is it about you that's making them try to talk to you? You see what I'm saying? I don't think women look at it like that enough. If you want to be reflective, if you want to be, um, um, if, if you want to create like a knowledge of self base where you know who you are, that's what it should be about. And then, cause it's somebody for everybody. Like I'm, I'm, I vividly think that I'm not talking about looks. I'm not talking about any of that shit. There's actually somebody for everybody. I think you just have to find them. Sometimes our standards are a little bit too high. I don't mean just accept anything from anybody, but I think sometimes we put standards of beauty standards of finances on people. And these aren't even things we've accomplished yet. We not even in that space, but we expect somebody else to be to a degree. You feel what I'm saying? So that's all I want to talk about today, man. I want to make sure that I remind everybody that this coming up Saturday, we have our second Saturday in a row of the Black History, the special Black History Month celebration at our business at Thompson Rose Chapel, 3601 Fifth Avenue, 95817. If you're in the area, come down, watch the movie at 2. Panel discussion will be at 5. This has been another great episode of the Melanated Convo Podcast. You can find my show at MelanatedTV. I'm sorry, uh, Melanated Fathers TV on YouTube. You can find the podcast at MelanatedFathers.com, the website. You can find the podcast on Spotify. You can find it on Anchor FM. I'd like to thank everybody who's been supporting me, everybody who sent me messages, everybody who, you know, kind of understand what I'm attempting to do and shows love and support. I, you know, I can't really express how much that actually means to me. I'm going to keep pushing, keep doing my thing, keep presenting my message to the world of family, of of getting an understanding of where you are as a black person in society. The quicker you do that, the quicker you do that, in my opinion, the easier your life's going to be, the easier your road is going to be. It's going to be getting a perspective on history, getting a perspective on religion, getting a perspective on your worldview. This just creates a world map. This, I'm sorry, this just creates a road map for you. So when you're looking at TV, when you're looking at what's going on in this world, you know how to compartmentalize everything and you're not dealing with any self-hate anymore. You're not self-deprecating because of slavery, because of Jim Crow, because of all this shit that we've had to go through. You feel me? So this has been another episode, man. Follow me on Instagram at MelanatedFathers100. That's the uh, um, um, that's the Instagram for um, for the website and for the platform and everything. This has been another episode of the Melanated Combo Podcast Family. I'm out.